Hello everybody, welcome to our lecture. Approach to Ultrasound Evaluation of Superficial Soft Tissue Mass Introduction Both MRI and ultrasound have important roles to play in diagnosis of soft tissue masses and it is important for any radiologist to be familiar with use of each modality. Requests for imaging of soft tissue masses are becoming more frequent as clinicians require good quality diagnostic information in order to determine clinic management. It is also important to understand when a specific diagnosis may be made, and how to guide clinicians in cases that are of uncertain diagnosis or where there is a suspicion of malignancy. This presentation will discuss the role of ultrasound imaging for clinically benign soft tissue masses and differentiate them from soft tissue sarcoma. We discuss the process of analysis of the ultrasound appearances of various common and uncommon lesions. Step 1. It is important to take a clinical history and physical examination because the clinical request form more frequently fails to provide important information. Example 1. Ultrasound shows otherwise nonspecific subcutaneous mass in the abdominal wall in a female patient. However, with the added history of pain and swelling fluctuating with menses, and that the mass lies within an old cesarean scar, the diagnosis of endometriosis is virtually diagnostic. Example 2. A patient referred for Morton's neuroma had ultrasound confirmation of a small non painful neuroma. However, the patient gave a supplementary history of pain radiating from behind the medial malleolus. Ultrasound made the diagnosis of a schwannoma of the tibial nerve, which was the main symptomatic lesion. Step 2. Pay attention to the location of the mass within the body and characterize the structure of origin of the lesion. This will help narrow the differential diagnosis. For example lesions may be subcutaneous, intramuscular, intermuscular, arising from nerves or vessels, juxtaarticular, or attached to tendon sheaths. Example 3. Several small ovoid hypoechoic nodules are seen arising from the plantar fascia in the sole of the foot. The diagnosis is that of multiple plantar fibroma. Example 4. A large mass in the posterior thigh with areas of cystic degeneration. It arises from the sciatic nerve and the appearances are those of an ancient schwannoma. Step 3. Evaluate the grayscale appearances of the soft tissue mass. 1. The internal echogenic characters. 2. Shape of the lesion. 3. Margins. 4 and presence or absence of calcification. Help in narrowing the differential diagnosis. 1. Internal echogenicity. The grayscale appearance of the mass can help to distinguish solid from cystic masses. Some masses have very characteristic internal appearances. Example 5. Cysts are typically anechoic with posterior acoustic shadowing. In this case a volar ganglion cyst in the wrist lies deep to the radial artery. The clinical differential was that of a radial artery aneurysm. Example 6. Subcutaneous lipomas typically have a very characteristic appearance of a homogeneous ovoid echogenic mass, close that of subcutaneous fat. There is usually little or no vascularity on Doppler ultrasound. Example 7. Keratosis are filled with desquamated material and have a very coarse echogenic texture. They are frequently interspersed with low echo areas and also small very echo bright foci. Note also the hypoechoic margin and posterior acoustic enhancement. This combination of findings is very characteristic. 2. Shape Lenticular flattened masses are more likely to be benign than larger rounded lesions. Certain masses may have a specific outline that aids diagnosis. Example 8. Large lipomas more than 5 cm are often referred for assessment in the regional sarcoma centers. However, large and flat lipomas such as in this case, have a very low malignant potential and most can be monitored clinically. Large round needed and deep lipomas should be regarded as potentially malignant. Example 9. 
This small subcutaneous low echo mask with posterior acoustic enhancement demonstrates a superficial tail indicating its origin from a hair follicle. The diagnosis is a sebaceous cyst. Example 10. A cystic lesion in the groin of a female patient lying superficial and medial to the femoral vessels, arrows. The speech bubble appearance is typical of a cyst of canal of nook. 3. Margin. Most soft tissue masses have a smooth well-defined margin and this appearance alone is not helpful in diagnosis. Irregular or poorly defined margins are less common and are indicative of certain conditions such as fibromatosis, endometriosis, hemangiomas, inflammatory masses, fat necrosis and soft tissue lymphoma. Example 11, 12. Two cases of lesions with irregular margins. In neither case could specific diagnosis be made, and biopsy was ultimately required. Example 13. Hemangiomas often have a mixed echo appearance due to the presence of both vascular and fatty components, which can give rise to an ill-defined appearance. 4. Calcifications. Both benign and malignant lesions may contain calcification or ossification. Calcification may more easily be appreciated on ultrasound than MRI. Correlative radiographs or CT may demonstrate characteristic pattern of calcification. Examples of benign calcifications. Mesocytis ossificans. Hemangioma. Bliomyoma. Ancient schwannoma. Examples of malignant calcifications. Synovial sarcoma. Soft tissue osteosarcoma. Soft tissue chondrosarcoma. Example 14. In this case the mass in the adductor muscle has mixed signals intensity on MRI. The area of low signal intensity is calcification which is much more easily appreciated on the ultrasound examination. Diagnosis, myositis ossificans. Step 4. The vascularity of a lesion may be misleading. Some soft tissue sarcoma have little demonstrable blood flow on Doppler imaging or may be necrotic centrally. Similarly some benign tumors such as schwannomas can be highly vascular. Large compressible veins with low flow may be a sign of a cavernous hemangioma, although some hemagiomas may show minimal or absent flow on Doppler. Other vascular lesions such as AV malformations and aneurysms are usually easily recognizable with Doppler imaging. Example 15. In the case of an otherwise nonspecific mass, the presence of marked internal vascularity should raise the suspicion of sarcoma, and biopsy performed. In this case a 3 cm subcutaneous, highly vascular mass was diagnosed on biopsy as a spindle cell sarcoma. Example 16. Doppler is particularly useful for tumors of vascular origin and for vascular malformations and aneurysms. In this case, there is a serpiginous vascular mass in the groin of female patient on Doppler imaging. Diagnosis, varicocele of the round ligament. Step 5. Use the dynamic nature of ultrasound to enhance the diagnosis of soft tissue lesions. Use of the U.S. probe to ballot lesions may help to distinguish cystic lesions from solid masses. Sonopalpation can demonstrate internal motion within the lesion and muscle contraction can be used to define the tissue plane. Example 17, sonopalpation, using probe pressure to compress a lesion, can help to identify echogenic cysts and bursa. In this patient with rheumatoid arthritis, the echogenic intermetatarsal mass is confirmed as a bursa filled with chronic exudate. There was no inflammatory component on Doppler imaging. Example 18. In some cavernous hemangiomas, the blood flow may be so slow that Doppler imaging is normal. However, on grayscale imaging blood corpuscles may be seen moving within the cavernous spaces. Example 19. Muscle hernias may be occult on MRI, but are easily diagnosed by U.S. with muscle contraction. Step 6. Evaluate the underlying bone, especially for deeper masses. Some bony lumps present as soft tissue masses and supplementary x-rays may be required to exclude primary bone lesions. Example 20. 
A teenage female presented with a soft tissue mass in the lower leg. The underlying fibula surface was irregular, and subsequent X-ray and MRI confirmed the diagnosis of Ewing sarcoma. Example 21. A young female presented with a supraclavicular mass. Ultrasound showed acoustic shadowing of a presumed bony mass, arrow, but was otherwise nonspecific. Radiographs demonstrated a previously undiagnosed clavicular pseudarthrosis which had resulted from a birth injury. Step 7. The scan report should provide a description, diagnosis and specific management recommendation. In case of indeterminate small subcutaneous well-defined soft tissue masses, MRI is unlikely to add further useful diagnostic information in the majority of cases. This picture shows management algorithm based on ultrasound appearance. This is the end of this lecture today. Thank you for watching and goodbye.